What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. If you're developing an alien spacecraft to come visit the Earth for some reason, since no one knows we exist beyond 100 light years from now, right, so let's say huge. by accident they stumble upon us. They built a spacecraft that spends 99.9999% of its time traveling through space. But they develop something like a flying saucer, which is meant to be aerodynamic in the atmosphere of the Earth, which they didn't even know was there until they get here. But why would they design a spacecraft, a flying saucer, if you wish, which is not the most effective way of traveling through interstellar space? The law of physics tell us here here's the thing Lawrence Krauss, welcome to New Jersey, sir. It's so great. I think this is the first time I've been in Hoboken. Really? I was trying to remember if I've been in Hoboken before. I don't think so. This is this is my first. It'll be memorable. Didn't you grow up right over here? I was born right over there, but uh -huh. I moved out when I was three months old. I said, I don't want to live here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you made that decision. Where, where I, I grew up in Canada. You grew up in Canada? In, in Toronto, yeah. So you're a true Canadian. I'm at, Well, I'm a sort of semi-true Canadian. Yeah, I actually... Um, uh, became Canadian, although when I, my parents mm. became Canadian, I thought I'd lost my American citizenship. In fact, when I came back to graduate school at MIT, I was on a visa. Really? And, and yeah, I was on a visa all, all the time. And then I got my first job at Harvard and, and I tried to get permanent residency. And the Harvard lawyer said, we think you're a citizen. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> well, is that I, you possible know, to you, lose it? Well, at that time, you apparently could. You see, my parents became Canadian. They lost their American citizenship uh, because at the time you had to renounce your citizenship in order to become citizen of another country. But mm. because I was a kid, I didn't suffer for the sins of my parents. And and I anyway, so I, I the Harvard lawyer said, you know, you can find out by applying for a passport, which I did. Got my passport, tore up my visa. And uh, anyway, so I'm there citizen of both I'm a citizen of both countries. But yeah, you don't have a Canadian accent. I don't detect that's that. That's really. well see, every now and then if I say about or something, I guess I do. But but then, you know, I don't know what my accent is, but uh, some people say they can hear the Canadian accent. And I think Canadians hear an American accent. But I lived in the US longer than Canada. I grew up in Canada, but then I moved in my twenties to go to graduate school and then I lived in the US mm. continuously until two years ago and moved back to Canada. Mm. When you were a kid, when when did you first get bit by the science bug, and the meaning the meaning of it all? Well, you know, it's I've I've tried to think of that a lot because my uh, uh, my mother wanted me to be a doctor and my brother to be a lawyer, of course, and and uh, so she told me doctors were scientists. So I think from a little time I was a little kid, since I thought I wanted to be a doctor, I was interested in science. But I the, I, I really remember when I was eleven reading a book about Galileo that really mm -hmm. had a big impact. He seemed like a heroic figure. And I thought all scientists were heroic figures. I've discovered that's not true. But uh, so I got into that. And then it was in high school when I realized that doctors weren't scientists, but I was kind of <laughs> hooked on it. Last month, I had in my friend, Dr. Brian Keating for episode 173 of the podcast. And I really appreciate all the amazing feedback we had on that one. It won't be the last episode we do together. I really enjoyed talking with Brian. He's such a smart guy and obviously very keyed into the entire physics community in addition to physics. But in that episode, almost 84% of the people who watched were not subscribed. And so what happens when we have a lot of non-subscribers watching who aren't hitting the button is YouTube does not put these videos into the algorithm. So that episode did fine, but it didn't do amazing despite the fact that the click-through, the watch time were all great, and like I said, the feedback was awesome. So if you'd like to see this podcast, get into the algorithm more and get some more support behind it so that we can get great guests like Brian to come in here, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. It is a huge, huge help, and I appreciate all of you who have already done so. And, and I, I read a book in high school by a, a physicist named Sir James Jeans. It was called Physics and Philosophy, and that really um, convinced me. So I, I knew I wanted to do science, but I wasn't convinced that that's all I wanted to do. I did history. I took a year off school to work on a Canadian history book, and there were oh, a lot really? of things I, I, I thought I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to eventually... Understanding the fundamental features of the universe just seemed like the sort of sexiest thing you could do. And so I always knew I'd go back to it. And I, I, I applied for my to graduate school and, uh, and didn't know if I'd get in anywhere, but I got into MIT. I also could, I was going to go to Oxford on a Rhodes Scholarship to do physics and philosophy, but I'm mm -hmm. so happy I didn't. Why? I, well, I think philosophy is the kind of thing you get enamored with when you're young and then you grow out of it. And, mm. and, and uh, at least I did. And so I went to do physics at MIT, and I didn't think I'd get a job. There were no jobs, and I, I got my PhD in early 80s. And uh, 
before you were born, probably. But anyway, yes. um, uh, and there were no jobs, so I, I sort of learned how to juggle and drive a taxi and things like that. But it turned out I got, I was at Lucky, and I got a good job at Harvard. And then it but when out. you, but when, especially at the higher end of education, when you're studying something like that, don't your jobs generally go into academic research and, and things yeah, like that? Yeah, but there were no jobs in academia at that time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just remember it was it, the likelihood of getting a professorship. I mean, it's always small, but it just seemed very remote. And it was a gamble, but I, but, and I tell kids nowadays who want to, you know, they want to know what whether they'll get jobs in this or that. You never know, first of all, but just do what you're interested in, and and mm. the training you get will be useful for whatever you're going to do, and 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 to try and choose a career because you think there's going to be a job in it is, first of all, you don't know down the road, and secondly, it's what if you get you choose something you don't like and you get a job in it? What how awful is that to spend your? So anyway. Uh, it worked out. It was a gamble, but it worked out in the end. And now here you are, published a bunch of published yeah. books later, uh -huh. years and years in the space, doing all kinds of research. But the the calling card that you're known for oh. is I, what is it? I is like the know. concept <laughs> of you thinking that everything came from nothing? Oh, that yeah, uh -huh. which is really hard. It is it, even as even as someone. Obviously, I'm not a scientist, it, but it, as a layman, sometimes mm. if I'm walking down the street and I start thinking about the kind of decision trees of where mm -hmm. everything could have started, mm -hmm. I then get stressed because I'm like, oh my God, it could have all never happened and there would have been nothing. Yeah. But then you think about nothing and you're like, well, wait a minute. F nothing is nothing, but that's still something because if you're picturing right. nothing, you're picturing like an empty that, room. That's, well, that's the, you, you got, you really do understand it uh, because it's nothing, it's, it's really hard to understand and everyone has a different definition of it. And I had to talk about that when I wrote the book because you're right, an empty room seems like nothing, but it's not nothing. Mm -hmm. the, the no Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.